Hey, welcome back to Fish on Northwest. We are here in the Bait Lab for this week's, uh, well, Bait Lab presentation presented by Max Lure. Everything, uh, a lot of things, multiple things we have here on the table and a lot of the things they have relative to kokanee and trout fishing and salmon, of course, is uh, found at maxlure.com. Check them out and uh, order your stuff soon. Now, um, lots of variables in the way you can put combinations of gear together. Uh, whether you're fishing with downriggers and or if you don't have them and you are relying on adding weight or dropper weight to your presentation It does work. You can get it done. Matter of fact, dropper lead works fantastic Even if you are deploying your side planters now, this is the new fashion side planters I built a little on the bigger side uh, wanted to up the game this year, especially when we get over and start fishing Areas like Roosevelt, uh, Brad Wagner spoke of side planter uh, fishing for even walleye. We will definitely be using these Flaming Gorge this year. Uh, one thing we found very effective is utilizing a dropper lead on our presentation behind the side planter. It's going to get your presentation down anywhere, you know, to an additional 15 to 20 feet in the water column, depending how you rig it. Now, certain uh, items work very well for leads that you can go with. You can even use your inline sinkers that you will uh, primarily purchase to, to rig uh, inline uh, with your float fishing. We use uh, these inline sinkers a lot when we're float fishing, bobber and eggs for Chinook and whatnot, uh, or even jig fishing for steelhead. These uh, rigged into your presentation off of a uh, swivel, and when it's rigged right, this hanging down works just fine as uh, any additional weight hanging from underneath uh, or on the swivel uh, as I'll show you how to rig this works. Dave's Tangle Free, um, those LEDs work fantastic. The other thing about them um, is that they have the swivel on the top, which I really like. So again, I like to not use a cannonball with a fixed uh, eyelid in the top because as you're trolling, I like things that spin and move um, simply because it's gonna prevent tangles. So how do we do it? First, I wanna show you how we don't do it, okay? So this top shot of monofilament uh, to my kokanee rod is rigged with a snap uh, a lock a snap lock to a dodger. Okay, now if I simply put a weight above that on a swivel that's rigged through the eye and a bead to protect the knot, um, and I hang that weight on there and it slides. That's really not what we're after here. First of all, that's going to get pushed all the way to the very back which is the front side of your dodger. Anytime we hang weight right in front of your dodger, that's gonna minimize the action on that uh, particular dodger. It's not gonna allow it to get full function and swing. You have that weight that's basically gonna cause it to um, not perform. And your presentation is not gonna have full action on it. This is not how you rig it. Although I do see people that in one fashion or another, Put that weight right in front of their dodger, whether they clip it, whether they tie it to a three-way drop swivel, whether they fix it and or it slides like this. This is completely wrong and we don't want to do that. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut that off because in a second here, I'm going to show you how to rig that the proper way. Okay, so let me move that. What we do want to do is make sure that if we're adding weight, we have our full presentation. So here I have a dodger and I have a eight or nine inch uh, leader, fishing a short leader with a smile blade and a little uh, rastical uh, LP squid. This is one of my favorite little rigs I use. Got one of the uh, Double D Dodgers from Max Lure. Now that could go right up uh, to my rod with no weight or anything on it and that's fishing just fine. Now I want to add some weight to it. Again, I'm not going to make this or rig this so that uh, everything is right down on top of or right in front of uh, the Dodger. Okay. So basically what I do is I rig a slider for a couple reasons. One, it gives me adjustability. I can move this up and down my top shot as far away from my dodger as I choose to, okay? And I do that by simply adding the bobber stops, the Bomac rubber bobber stops. That's the first thing that goes on, that goes up my top shot. And then I put a bead on, and then I like to use these little tube sliders. Now, there's a number of different manufacturers that make tube sliders for uh, holding weight in your presentation. And you can use them for a variety of different things, uh, even vertical fishing for some, uh, uh, in some fashion. But for me, when it comes to utilizing some type of slider, I like to use a sliding tube versus just a barrel swivel. I don't like the way the barrel swivel puts a direct little point of contact on your uh, line. 
This disperses the load of the weight that you hang underneath it. So I have more confidence in the fact that this is a little bit longer in how much area it covers. So I'm gonna rig that on. Uh, and then I slide on another bead and then I slide on another uh, Bomax stopper. And I can do a couple things with this. I can set both of those stoppers, much like how you rig floats. You can pin those together and now I have a fixed weight. That's not gonna move anywhere, okay? It has uh, the slider in between. I got the two beads. I got the uh, Bomac bobber stops. And that weight is pinned. And it is a good 18 inches to two feet away from my Dodger, which is going to allow this Dodger to have plenty of action in the water column. The other thing I can do is I can rig this so that uh, it does, in fact, slide, which simply allows me to reel in uh, a little further. Uh, it allows me to collect line as I'm bringing the fish towards the net, okay? So when I pin this, that's as far as I'm going to be able to reel once it hits the top of that. And if I extend that out to five, six, eight feet in front of the Dodger, which you can do, and it is effective at times, uh, usually I'm gonna fish that two to three feet in front of the Dodger, at least our experience, especially fishing behind the side planers, two to three feet in front of the Dodger seems to be adequate. It's gonna get your presentation down and it's going, to, um, it's going to allow your dodger and gear to function the way it should. Really simple to rig this. Uh, it's not uh, anything too tricky. First thing I'm going to do is, like I said, grab a bobber stop. We're gonna slide that on. If you guys haven't used these before, they're super simple, okay? It just goes through the eye right there. Slide that on to your line, run it up. Now because we need something to stop against the tube. We're gonna place a bead on here. This is about a five millimeter bead. Doesn't really matter on color, though anything that you put on there that glows a little bit, has some UV to it, can always be beneficial. More UV can't hurt. Slide the tube on, slide another uh, bead on, and then simply slide on another bobber stop, and then tie this to your dual lock, okay? So, there you go. That's it, that is uh, on there. Now I can reel this bobber stop right up through the top guide. Doesn't, uh, doesn't prevent me from milling it in. I can pin that down like I demonstrated earlier, can lock that in place. You can fish it either way, okay? Typically I like to fish it as a slider. Uh, keep in mind, more times than not, it'll probably push back towards your Dodger wherever you have that stopper at. So I tend to leave that stopper again, two to three feet from my Dodger. And then if I want, uh, if I want to extend that out a little and allow it to slide and move around at times, especially when we're netting fish, um, I'll go ahead and run that up the line and let it go through the guides, no big deal. So proper ways to rig your droppers. And there are charts available that tell you exactly how much weight to apply to your presentation, what your troll speed is, and how far back uh, uh, the line you let out the, determines how deep that's gonna go. So again, distance back from the boat, troll speed and ounces of weight. And again, you're not, you're not hanging three ounces or so off these kokanee rods. You're hanging an ounce, maybe ounce and a half at the most at times. And really to get, uh, if you're letting out a hundred feet or so, and then pushing it out on a side planer, getting out away from the boat, you're gonna be dropping down 15 to 20 feet. And in some of those bigger fish in some of these reservoirs and where they hang in those upper water columns, that's exactly all you need to actually get into the fish. You're not talking about dropping this stuff down 30 and 40 feet. Now you can do that, you can rig rods, heavier rods than kokanee rods, you can add an ounce or two if you don't have down riggers, and you can play that game, and you'd be surprised, simply Google weight charts, dropbacks, setbacks, things like that, it's all gonna come together, it's gonna give you some options to look at. Again, it's gonna tell you speed of troll, it's gonna tell you feet of setback, it's gonna tell you ounces of weight, and it's gonna give you an indicator of how deep that presentation is going, because that's really what you're after. So hopefully that gives you some options to think about, However you rig it, don't put your weight right in front of your Dodger. Give yourself a couple feet, again, to allow that presentation to do what it's designed to do. All right, that'll do it for us this week in the Bait Lab. Uh, we'll jump out for a quick commercial. We come back. Mike keeps cutting out. We come back. We'll close out the show with Dakota Poorman in studio right here at Fish on Northwest. <laughs>